when I started to have that success was when everything changed. As I was getting these jobs and getting these movies, I was miserable. Like, I started getting more and more um, unhappy, the opposite of what it was mm -hmm. supposed to be. Right. Um, as I started to get where I had always dreamed of being. And I was, at this point, I had just starred in a movie and I was producing and casting at that time. And I, I flew to Cannes Film Festival in France, which is in the film business, is a huge that's thing. If you get, that's the place <coughs> to be. That's the place to be. So they're rolling out new <coughs> films and all that. You know. <coughs> yes, I got I got to be part of the market and go to all the red carpet okay. premieres that yeah. were happening and everything. And I had people creating these handmade gowns for me from scratch mm -hmm. and doing my hair, and my makeup, and all these things. And I remember I was standing on the red carpet. I think it was at a Woody Allen premiere, and there's photographers everywhere and just people everywhere, but. I was on this inside, right? Mm -hmm. And they were on the outside. Like there were these gates that the world couldn't get in and we were, you know, yeah. like these special people or yeah. something. And it was in that moment that I felt the Holy Spirit calling me. Wow. And it was the most empty that I had ever been. And on that red carpet, I remember I had gone to the, the you know, went and looked in the mirror, I had gone to the restroom and I had looked in the mirror and it was the scariest thing because no one was looking back at me. Wow. wow. Literally, it was just like a shell mm -hmm. um, because I had left the most important thing behind. It's so profound what you were saying and, and that was part of it is that a lot of my falling away um, as an adult and a lot of that emptiness came from the fact that I thought I was supposed to I thought I was doing good when I was pleasing the world, mm -hmm. and especially when I was pleasing, you know, well, don't I need to make my boyfriend happy, mm -hmm. or don't I need to make the entertainment industry happy, mm -hmm. you know, oh, they want me to, you know, look better, you know, oh, well, I'm 100 pounds, let me go on their diet so I can be 90 pounds, mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. they needed me to do, you know, so that they were adoring me, mm -hmm. And I thought that that was where I needed to get adoration because I had no idea who I was mm -hmm. in Christ. And, and, and what was really happening in that uh, stripping away of everything was that God, I just had no idea that God loved me. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I did not love myself. I didn't believe yeah. that God would ever be there for me. I had been through a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think when you go through a lot of bad things through your life that you feel like, well, you know, God doesn't care about me. He's not going to protect me, so mm -hmm. I have to protect yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. yeah, I cool. was very, very physically ill, okay. and this wonderful priest was coming to bring me the Eucharist every day. <sighs> and the one time that I would feel well is when I would take the Eucharist right after I would take the Eucharist. And I, it was the first time that I understood that that is the living presence mm -hmm. of Jesus Amen. in me, and we are becoming one. Mm -hmm. And that desire that I had after that, cause when he was bringing yeah. that to me, was to never, you know, always mm -hmm. be with him every day. If I don't take, if I'm not in mass every day, I, 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 I feel the loss. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, I can mm -hmm. feel a difference yes. in myself and even in my ability to, uh, you know, to fight the enemy or to fight sinner, the Holy Spirit's power in me is through this amazing, whether it's in Eucharistic adoration or mm -hmm. in mass, both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just had this absolute falling in love. Right with Jesus in the Eucharist and you know he was just speaking and speaking into my life and I read the whole Bible when I was sick. When you're sick mm -hmm. I was praying for four hours a day mm -hmm. at that time and he was creating this soldier which he was going to need me to be to to help others mm -hmm. and to to do evangelization and to be able to get through those things mm -hmm. so yes that priest coming into my life and and also, you know, the things that they were doing for me when I was sick, you know, they would literally pick me up and carry me to the church when I couldn't, when oh I couldn't God. even get out of bed, mm -hmm. you know, and they were having private, ma they were so determined that I wasn't going to die. And I, I had, had to get to the point where I was going to make peace with the fact that I may, you know, I was going to go. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was through that of letting go of everything like Job does. Um, I needed that because I was a very, always, you know, the perfectionist, the go-getter, the I'm going to, you know, plan this out and control these things and do all of these things. 
when I had no control at all, and that was God showing me, I have all control, I have all power. Everything that you have is from me, through me, in me. It was the Catholic faith in the fullness had um, the only explanation of any faith that I've ever seen that explains redemptive suffering and explains the value of suffering. And as my spiritual director, you know, had, had really put it into perfect words that it's not just the resurrection. You have to have the life the death, the mm -hmm. crucifixion, mm -hmm. and the resurrection, that our lives have to mirror all three parts of Jesus' life. Wow. 